Hello everyone and welcome back finally to another episode of Top 10 Tunes where we count down the top 10 cartoons, a variety of subjects involving all your favorite cartoons. New, old, it doesn't matter. Welcome to season 3. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? With the start of a new season and the return of the show, we've decided to upgrade. Now we have new snazzy graphics and even a new intro. Roll the tape! <laughs> I'll just jump straight into the countdown, but if you would like to know the full story of what happened that caused this long hiatus, it will be in the comments below. Now with that out of the way... It is here, the most anticipated sequel many of you have been asking for. To celebrate the return of the show and the start of Season 3, we are making our first ever Part 2 of our most popular video, Top 10 Toon Transformations. If you haven't checked it out, the link is in the iCard right over there. Whether through a magic spell, a curse, or science, many times in cartoons characters have been transformed into other creatures. We are here to count down another Top 10 Best Toon Transformation Moments. The list will be determined by the impact of the transformation to the story with bonus points for how great the transformation sequence or reveal is. We will be excluding anime since, well, transformation is rampant in anime. Now let's count down the next best moments where characters have transformed into completely different species. Whether animal, monster, or anything in between, these are the next top 10 best toon transformations. I am so mad at you! Number 10 Dude! You just transformed into a dog! No! Courage the Cowardly Dog is a familiar series to this show. It is a series about a dog who fights off evil creatures to protect his loved ones in the cursed land of nowhere. In one episode, things went a little off the rails for him and his farmer master Eustace. Courage tends to change himself when he is scared and trying to explain an imminent threat coming to the Bag family. But those are not really transformations and are more like a game of charades. In one episode, Courage is transformed into a fly, but there is a much better transformation themed episode titled The Transplant. Courage finds a mysterious bone while digging. After excavating the site, it is discovered to belong to a giant extinct kangaroo monster. The money hungry Eustace decides to sell the bones to make a profit, but takes a terrible fall requiring a bone transplant. Lucky for him, Courage has one left over from the kangaroo. But later that night, things change. <laughs> now a giant kangaroo, Eustace takes his wife Muriel for a joyride. Courage, the ever loyal dog, decides to go after him, but the only way to defeat a giant kangaroo monster is another giant kangaroo monster. Off to the doctor! Still breathing. Good sign. <laughs> With Courage kangarooed up, it's time for them to square off. That's right, it's a kaiju battle, done in that silly Courage way. <laughs> While the actual transformation scene was short, this made it onto the list for having an entire episode based around the change and even gave us a pretty interesting monster fight. That's a win in my book. This is one episode that anyone can jump right into. Who cares? Free food! I am so mad at you! Number 9 Dude! You just transformed into a dog! The newest addition to the list, Batman vs Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has transformations all over the place. Now I won't be going too in depth on this one since it's still relatively new and I don't want to spoil anything big. 
It is a great movie and honestly one of the most fun DC animated movies. So if you get the chance, I highly recommend watching it. The characters from the TMNT universe visit Gotham City, where there is something strange going on. There's a secret alliance of the ninja variety, and smack dab in the middle of it is the mutagenic ooze that transformed four regular turtles into the heroes in the half shell, among others. What happens when you cross a mutating ooze and Gotham City? You get yourself some furry villains, of course. And a plant? That's new. <laughs> Some of Batman's most iconic villains get the transformation treatment in a short but satisfying sequence. The villains transform into animals that greatly represent their personalities. Harley Quinn becomes a hyena. Bane is a jaguar. I'm sure there's some sort of connection there, but my only guess is that it's a Lucha Libre reference. Mr. Freeze becomes a rather plain looking polar bear to be honest. Wish he had a more iconic look rather than just his black eyes and his ice gun. Scarecrow becomes a crow. Does that mean he scares himself? Two-Face is a cat. No idea there. And most mysteriously of all, Poison Ivy becomes a Venus flytrap. I'm not too informed on the lore of the turtles, but I don't remember the ooze making plant people before. And let's not forget the main man himself, Joker, who becomes a really cool looking cobra. One reptile to another. <laughs> There are other transformations thrown in that I won't reveal in this list. The transformation sequences are very well made and visceral at times. It is really enjoyable again to see just how the infamous villains become and just how they let their inner animals out. You're my working as Joker! <laughs> hey, we made it! Uh, I am so mad at you! Number 8 you just transformed into a dog. That's impossible. How could... Clover! Okay! I need to wax. I get it. Whatever happened to those passengers is happening to me. What do you get when you put an evil fashion designer on an island filled with dozens of kidnapped tourists? You get human-animal hybrids, of course. Totally Spies is a show about a trio of teenage girls who work as secret agents for Whoop the World Organization of Human Protection. In the episode Wild Style, the girls go out to solve the mystery of a disappearing cruise ship. On the way, they get caught in a whirlpool, but make it to safety on an island. But there be something fishy going on around here. Or should I say, catty. Guys, I'm hungry. How about we talk about this over a tasty saucer of milk? Clover is injected with a formula and slowly transforms into an anthropomorphic cat. And she's not the only one, as it seems that the tourists from the cruise ship have all been changed as well. Turns out that the island is under the control of the fashion designer Helga von Guggen. Her plan? To make perfectly fitting fur coats out of human-animal hybrid. So evil, yet so genius. It won't seem gross when my fabulous fur line has made me insanely rich. The girls stop Helga and return the tourists and Clover back to normal. However, Helga gets a taste of her own medicine as she falls into the vial of transformation formula and emerges as a hideous mashup of animals. A fair punishment if I do say so myself. This episode didn't have much interaction between the characters and their new bodies, but it did feature a lot of transformed people and an ending just right for a transformation themed episode. It was perfect. What's wrong? I'm allergic to cats. Sorry. I am so mad at you! Number 7 Dude! You just transformed into a dog! Ah! This'll teach you not to heckle the headliner! Presto Changeo! Super. The Teen Titans may have a member whose sole power is to transform into animals, but when the rest of the gang are transformed by the amazing Mumbo, it's a whole new experience. Wait till I get my claws on Mumbo! Did I just say claws? Uh, be thankful that you do not have the fleas. The Titans have had several moments in the future where they have transformed through various means, but the first time is always the strongest. In the episode titled Bunny Raven or How to Make a Titanimal Disappear, yeah I know, weird name, the Titans jump in to stop the great Mumbo from robbing a bank. However, this magician has a few tricks up his sleeve. He sucks all the titans into his magical hat. 
Then comes the big reveal. Oh man, I can take losing a fight, but this is just me. Oh. All the Titans have been transformed into animals. But what about Beast Boy? Whatever species Mumbo transforms them into, BB just changes himself right back. What to do? Mumbo Jumbo! With Beast Boy neutralized, Mumbo begins to play games with the Titans as they fight off their new animal instincts. It is a rather silly episode, but a fun one nonetheless. It is one of the most memorable episodes in the series for its off-the-wall antics and, of course, the transformations. The interactions between the Titans and the way they act in their new forms is enjoyable to see. Really makes the change all the more interesting. While we do not actually get to see them change, just getting to see them interact with their new bodies and all the hilarity that ensues makes this one a joy to watch. It is magical. Uh, why does that rabbit sound like Raven? Because I am Raven. Oh, you look so cute! <laughs> I am so mad at you! Number six! Dude! You just transformed into a dog! Four legs! Four legs! I did that the first time too. Who wouldn't want to try being a Jack Wynn, the winged tigers of Avalor? Elena of Avalor is about a teen princess who rules a magical kingdom after dethroning the evil sorceress Shuriki. In the episode titled Shapeshifters, Elena is forbidden from seeking out Shuriki by the council after she learns that the sorceress had returned. Angry, she stomps off to her friend Mateo, who had just completed a transformation potion. Whoa! You look like a real Jacqueline! Watch this. I can fly! Once taken, the person is transformed into a Jacqueline. Of course, you have to try that, and so Elena does. Four legs, four legs! I did that the first time too. Wow, you'd never know it was me! I could fly right out of the castle and nobody would think twice! Being able to change into a Jack Wynn gives Elena an idea. You can't stop her from leaving the palace to search for Shariki if no one can tell it's her. So she tricks her guard Gabe into coming with them, under the lie that she wants to visit the Jacqueline's birthday party. So they all change into Jacqueline's and fly off, stumbling along the way as they become accustomed to their new forms. Despite the name, the episode isn't focused around the transformation, but rather the Jacqueline's and the trouble they get into. Still, the transformation itself and the way that the characters marvel at their new bodies, especially Mateo, is a joy to see. They struggle with their new forms, as anyone would, but they do have some fun with them. I mean, come on. It would be really cool to be a flying tiger, am I right? Deal? Deal. <laughs> now let's shake a tail feather. Get it? <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately. I am so mad at you! Number five. Dude, you just transformed into a dog. Billy. Cut it out before I yank your tongue out through your nose. <laughs> Don't worry, Mandy. The tail makes you look exotic. Having the Grim Reaper as a friend will make any day an interesting one. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy is a show about a dim-witted boy and a scary mean girl who tricked the Grim Reaper into being their friend forever. Never a dull moment when he's around. For example, did you know that Grim keeps a supply of cursed objects in his robe? The only thing I keep in my robe are terrible cursed objects! <laughs> One of these objects is the Mask of the Beast. It is the Mask of the Beast! Whoever puts it on must be nice, polite, friendly, and happy, or they will turn into a terrible, hideous beast! Hmm, forces them to be nice, you say? Well, I know of a certain angry little girl who could use a lesson in friendship. Mandy wakes up the next morning with a surprise. When she gets up, she orders her mother around to make her a very specific breakfast, activating the cursed mask and starting the first of many changes. <coughs> Mandy soon catches onto the transformation when a tail sprouts from her back. The jig is up. Time to rub it in her face. Grim and me was getting sick of you bossing us around, see? So I put the Mask of the Beast on you! 
And now, if you keep being mean to us, you're gonna turn into a horrible, hideous monster! I don't believe this. Ow! Mandy learns that she must be nice to everyone or else risk losing her humanity. But being nice isn't so easy for her. Over and over, she loses her temper and changes more and more into a hideous beast. She gives up and tries her best to be kind. That doesn't go over so well. Grim and Billy take advantage of the situation and pick on Mandy since they know that she can't do anything to stop them. But you can only take so much before you break, and Mandy finally cracks. Having the changes happen one at a time throughout the episode and the reactions to each of them makes this one a great transformation themed episode. It's a beast. Well, we knew this was going to happen from the start. Yeah, but it was worth it. Well, a girl's gotta have her principles. I am so mad at you! Number four! Dude! You just transformed into a dog! <gasps> What's that? The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes are undoubtedly the best in the iconic show. Every year, The Simpsons make a Halloween special parodying horror movies from the past, one of which is The Island of Dr. Moreau. Now, the Treehouse of Horror episodes are no stranger to transformations. There were many moments where characters changed forms, like Ned becoming a werewolf, the family into various mythical creatures, and the time elders changed into dinosaurs to name a few. In fact, that dinosaur one almost made it onto the list, but there was one other short that tops it, the island of Dr. Hibbert. The Simpsons travel to an island for vacation, but they'll be getting a lot more than they expected. Marge begins to feel suspicious about the going ons of the island and goes out at night to investigate, falling victim to the experiments of Dr. Hibbert. She returns to her hut a changed woman, her cat. Homer does what any sane man would with a cat girl in his bed, but he soon realizes that Marge has changed. After he's had his fun, of course. He goes out to stop the mad doctor when he runs into the others already changed. Even his three children have fallen victim to the doctor. Homer tries to convince everyone that they need to turn back into humans. But... All you can do is eat and sleep and mate and roll around in your own filth and mate and eat... Where do I sign up? Now, Geriatric Park I mentioned earlier does have the better transformation scenes. But I can only choose one episode per series and this short has a lot more variety in the forms as well as being the first to tackle this theme. It was interesting to see all these characters we come to know as different animals. In the end, Homer saw the light and decided it was time to let the inner animal out. Think about it, my hideous children. Aren't you better off now than you were as humans? Meg gusto pollen. Disco shrew can steal boogaloo. <laughs> I am so mad at you! Number three! Dude! You just transformed into a dog! Ah! Uh, huh? I'm a monkey! That gross geezer turned me into a monkey! Uh, actually, you're a lemur. Uh, whatever! I'm all hairy and nasty and I have a wet nose! Uh, oh man! And I've got fleas! Not going to lie. This one was supposed to be in the original Top 10 Toons Transformations list, but I cannot find this episode on video. Luckily, I have gotten my hands on the episode, and now I can show how great this transformation really is. Juniper Lee is a show about a girl who has the task of fighting off monsters and demons as Tejuan Si, the guardian of the balance between the magic and human world. She is faster and stronger than your average girl through magic enhancement. In The Great Escape, Juniper gets into more trouble than she can handle on her own. While visiting the zoo, she overhears two camels talking. But animals don't talk. Well, for pity's sake, how long does it take to free some vermin-infested zoo animals? Well, normal animals don't talk. They tell her that they've been trapped by the zookeeper and turned into animals. But they aren't the only ones. Juniper agrees to help everyone escape. She returns later that night, but she is not as great of a ninja as she thought, as she has quickly discovered. Time for this zookeeper to make a new addition to the zoo. <laughs> Trapped, Juniper Lemur is stuck prisoner with the rest of the animals, used as fuel for his magical energy. 
Her brother Ray Ray and her doggy assistant Monroe realize something is wrong when she fails to return and decide to jump into action themselves. <laughs> you know, it's just a thought, but this might be an easier way in. <laughs> okay, let's try it your way. Meanwhile, Juniper takes over the prison as the big shot of the bunch. Ray Ray and Monroe reach her and discover that she isn't the same as they remembered. Sweet Mary McGonagall! Somebody needs a waxing appointment! Whoa! <laughs> you are one ugly monkey! <laughs> Hello! I'm a lemur! Tree-dwelling prosimian from Madagascar! Big difference! Monroe brings them a magic nullifying ball and Juniper is back to her normal self. They break out the udders and change them all back to their demonic selves. As for the zookeeper, with all the animals gone, she loses her magic power and goes through a change herself. No! My power! My beauty! What's happening? The reaction Juniper has to her transformation is priceless. One of the best I've seen in cartoons. The entire episode is focused on the animals and Juniper taking her new role as a lemur. The reactions from everyone to Juniper's transformation, including herself, made this episode one to remember. My head's killing me. Maybe I just need to drink some water and... I am so mad at you! Number two. Dude, you just transformed into a dog. Adjusting to life in the private sector. Hey, Kronk. Can you top me off, pal? Be a friend? <laughs> <laughs> now about you finding new work. And I mean that in the best possible way. One of the more glossed over Disney films. The Emperor's new groove is chock full of transformations. Get them! Hey, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? You're excused. Anyone else? No, no we're, 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 good. Good. we're good. Get them! Kuzco is the egotistical ruler of an Inca kingdom. When he fires his assistant Yzma, she becomes enraged and along with her dull henchman Krunk, they plan to kill Kuzco with a poison drink. However, Krunk adds in the wrong ingredient, and instead of dying, Kuzco becomes... well... A llama? He's supposed to be dead! Yeah, weird. They knock him out, planning to get rid of him, but Krunk loses the sack with his body inside. The sack ends up in the hands of a peasant named Pancha, which coincidentally Kuzco had planned to make homeless by building a resort over his home. Now realizing that he's no longer human, the duo set off on an adventure to return Cusco to normal, promising to no longer demolish Pancha's home. Yzma learns that Cusco is still alive and sets out to finish him off. For most of the film, it's a bloody adventure as Cusco and Pancha travel the land. They discover Yzma's plot and soon her secret lab, with a cool entrance. There they find a ton of transformation potions. That's when things get nuts and there's transformations galore. Yeah! We're flying! Uh-oh. After all the commotion is over, there are only two potions left. Yzma and Kuzco scuffle to get the last potion, when there's a poof. Meow. <laughs> Yzma may be a kitty cat, but she is still her evil self. She takes the final potion from Kuzco to transform back into a human but her little kitty paws just can't open it. In a fit of rage to try to open the vial, she bounces it on the ground and it falls off the monument, with her along with it. Cusco returns to normal, ends his plans to destroy Pancha's home, and they all lived happily ever after. Well, maybe not all of them. Squeak, 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 squeakers. Squeaking. This movie has so many transformations, from Cusco to the guards to Yzma in the finale. The Emperor's new groove is themed around transformation, so much so that the cartoon series that later followed it had transformations up the wazoo. With a movie centered around transformation spinning off into a cartoon series full of transformation, there is no way I could leave this one out. It is as much transformation as you can get. Open up! Yay, I'm a llama again! Wait. I am so mad at you! Number one! Dude! You just transformed into a dog! Ooh! What does this button do? Please! Please! 
Please, do not push the button. You have no idea of what it does. If you like Transformations, then get ready for this one. The premiere of the hit Cartoon Network series Dexter's Laboratory is pure transformation fun. In the pilot episode of the show, Dexter had invented a remote that transforms anyone into various animals. His sister Dee Dee, who always enjoys sneaking into his lab, wrecking his stuff, and especially pushing big red buttons, grabs the remote and uses it on her little bro. Dexter gets his payback as he then uses the remote on her. And I want to live in a big, big castle and have lots and lots of horses! However, they picked a bad time to fool around as they have to get ready for school. They continue their battle until they are left as the two slowest animals on the planet. Their mom decides to get them after they ignore her, but she can't know about Dexter's lab or his experiments. The two race to the remote to change back before she can see them. And one final twist, the two end up in each other's bodies as they head off to school. Last one down is an icky icky slimy spider! This is one great episode and a good introduction to the show. Similarly to the winner of the last Top 10 Toons Transformations video, there is a face-off between two foes as they continue to change into different animals. As with the previous winner, this episode is definitely worthy of the number one spot. Why not? I've been everything else today. And there you have it, the next Top 10 Best Transformations in Cartoons. Be sure to check out all the runner-ups at the end of the video to see even more. Also, be sure to use that paw of yours to boop that subscribe button to catch the next episode as soon as it airs. Top 10 Toons Disney Plus Needs What are some cartoons from Disney's lineup that's missing from their streaming service that you most want in? Leave your suggestion in the comments below and it just might make it onto the list. Before we go, I would like to give a sincere apology for my hiatus and a huge thanks to everyone here for helping this channel reach 1000 subscribers. This is a big milestone and I cannot be happier. Thank you all so much for your support. The show will continue on a regular schedule again. We are finally back and we aren't going anywhere. Thanks again for everything and I'll see you all next time. It's puberty! You're not going to eat this one. Hello. Can anyone here perform marriages? Marriages? Oblivion. You love struck Where is he? Where'd he go? Hey, what's happening? What did you do? Oh my gosh, I'm a dog! You guys turned me into a stupid dog! The birth of man bat. Ah! I'm a hamster! Holy moly, holy moly, holy moly, holy moly. Daddy's cute. Thank you, Angel. <laughs> a teensy weensy bit late with that birdie spell, my luscious. Turn me into a human again now! Okay, lovebird. Best way to beat a platypus was to become a platypus!
That way our skills would be evenly matched. So, after a couple of promising experiments and some intricate designs, I finally created the Platypinator! Pretty cool, huh? You don't want to see my bad side. <laughs> Smashing Gary. Party favor, anyone? Apple? Apple? Woof! Woof! Smashing Gary. Party favor, anyone? Woof! Apple! Smashing No! No! Huh? Uh, what the? Uh, ah, 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 my nose! Could it be? No. Dang it! Subject vitals are stable. Inserting rectal thermometer. It's okay, buddy. Hey, it's okay, don't you worry, your good friend Walter is- There is no, underline no, werewolf. Say it. Alright. There is no, that's it, that's it. I went to the hideout of this character called Shredder. I was taking pictures of some machine when something happened to me. Stop! Oh, cute. But I don't think it's a ponytail. It's more of a... Oh. 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 